Today on Larry Smith Outdoors, we're up on the Wolf River and the walleyes have made it into the river. Hey, last year, there wasn't hardly any walleyes in the river. The, most of the forage stayed out. We didn't have a lot of current. This year, we got a fair amount of current. A lot of shad moved into the river here and the walleyes followed them in here. And what happens is most of the time, this time of year, you're catching the males. It, also, the water temperature, when it starts dropping down, they, can, they call it a false run. So when you put in the water temperature, you put in the current, and you put in the movement of, of forage, like shiners and, and shad, you get walleyes to move back into the river. So I've got a bunch of guests today. We're gonna go out and try to catch some good eating size walleyes. Most of the fish are gonna probably be between 14 and 18 inches, and along with a bunch of white bass and maybe even a few crappies. Hey, come along, let's see what we do. The new Beaver Dam Titanium Tip Stick is the first ice rod with a built-in extendable titanium spring bobber, making it the most versatile ice rod ever. Extend the bobber for ultralight panfish jig or retract it for game fish or when it's time for travel. It even has a built-in rattling handle to attract fish. It took a while to come up with an ice rod worthy of the Beaver Dam name, but when we did, boy, we nailed it. Today's special guest, we got Mike, Ryan, and Ray. You know what, the cool part about fishing always is that it's about spending time with your family, right, Ray? I mean, your dad used to come along on these trips. Now you've got your son, Mike, and your son-in-law, Ryan. And you know what, it won't be long. I know we're gonna have another yep. little guy coming. Quinn, right? Yes. Yep. So, you know, it's about, fishing's about building memories, right? Oh, you got one? Yep. Okay, yep, Flip, bring him in. Oh, another nice one. Ryan's got the starts today off again. The hot hand. You got him, Mike? All right. What do you got? Walleye or white bass? So far, oh, nice one. Bring him right in. She'll hold him right up to the camera too when you get him in. There you go. Another nice fish. We we're on fire already this morning. First pass? I haven't had a bite yet. Come on. You know, today we're up on the Wolf River and we're starting out of Fremont. We're gonna, it's really windy. You can't really tell where we're at right now. And that's the nice part about fishing the rivers, especially this time of year. Yesterday it was 22 degrees above. This morning it's about 38, so we, it warmed up a little bit. So the nice part about fishing the river, especially like the Wolf River, is that you've got miles and miles and miles of river and we're gonna be fishing deep holes, but you can also get out of the wind. Now yesterday we fished above town and we went below town and there was walleyes in pretty much almost every spot we fished and quite a few white bass. You know again what brings these fish into the river is going to be the water temperature cooling down because again it triggers the males, they think it's, it's time to spawn again and it triggers especially the younger males to come back into the river. So the nice part about it is that most of the fish we're catching, if you do want to keep fish to eat, are, are younger males anywhere from that 14 to 18 inches. So it works out good. And what we're going to be doing is vertical jigging. And today, we're, the key is always to use like a high-vis line and make sure you have a swivel in there. And so what I'm using, I've got some, some fire line on a couple of them. And then I've got some regular mono, high-vis mono on some with a good swivel. And then I'm using a six-pound test floral carbon leader and as far as jig size that'll be determined as far as the wind and the current as far as what spot we're in and basically we're trying to trying to stay vertical all the time and the 90 percent of them are going to hit the walleyes and the white bass are going to hit when it falls so and we're also going to be using a lot of plastics today like the kaolins and we're going to be using some live bait so and most of the time we'll be fishing anywhere from about 10 to about 18 feet of water. So again, we're gonna be fishing the deeper pockets. Ooh, nice fish, fling him in, fling him in, fling him in. Oh, nice over the boat. Nice job. <laughs> Ray, man, you're on the board. Come on, Ray. Fling him in. There you go, oh, nice fish. Hold him up to the camera, Ray. Turn to the camera always. Another Larry Smith special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been coming up fishing with Larry. This is probably our 15th trip roughly and we just enjoy it. We just continue to come back. We have so much fun and uh, 
We always seem to do well fishing, but if nothing else, we always have a great time and really enjoy coming up here and fishing with him and having enjoying his company in the boat and have learned well, a lot. Don't go overboard now, Ray. Come on now. And you, learned a lot about you fishing. enjoy the outdoors, you know. There you go. Right. You know what? So many people that I've been guiding for a long time, like you guys, you know, we're you know we're friends and yeah. and that's the way it becomes. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a. Uh, I never wake up in the morning thinking, oh, God darn it, even though some days the weather is absolutely horrible, and we fished in enough of that stuff already, but it's always enjoyable, you know, fishing with you guys. All right, Raymond, fling him in. Oh, nice fish, get him in, get him in, woo -hoo. That's oh, a nice, nice fish. fish, nice fish. That's a nice fish. I look how fat them fish are. They are you know, thick. I was talking about this in our earlier show, Ray, is that, you know, last couple years, our forage levels have been so low this year we really got some decent shad numbers yeah. and that's crucial to this system is to have have really good forage levels you can tell by the girth and the yeah, build yeah. on that fish that our forage levels have come back around nice job he's been eating good yes he has ray now i know <laughs> you know like i said earlier sometimes you got it sometimes you don't no when i know when i start the day off and the first fish <laughs> is that way and you guys already got like you know seven, eight walleyes in the boat. Some days you have it, some days you don't. So far, I don't. You got one right? Keep yeah. reeling, keep reeling. Nice fish. Ooh, nice fish. Bring him in, Rick. Keep reeling. Nice job. Nice sandwich. Sandwich? That's a meal. <laughs> I finally got one. Woo. And it's not a walleye, but a white bass. You know, every time I see white bass, the first thing I think of is I think of winter. And I'll tell you honestly, I hate to say this, but white bass are one of my favorite things to catch through the ice. You can catch numbers, they're good hitters, and you know, they're kind of one of them kind of schooling fish that you got to get them to trigger, and once you get them to go, it's game on. And they're not bad eating, I'll tell you that much right there. But hey, I got a fish finally you guys put in the box. <laughs> about time. Yeah. Hey, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Oh, there's a nice walleye. You got a real nice one? Yeah, that's a netter. Get the net, get, oh, that's a net, get the net. Oh, I just lost mine. Get the, get the, oh, right. That's a nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, 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 oh. Nice I just fish. lost one too. I, actually, we thought these fish had moved and uh, I just ha actually finally had a walleye on myself. Boy, that one just absolutely slammed that jig. You know, and that, I'll let you hold them, Mike, but that's definitely, we'll let this one go. That's a female. Definitely can tell by the belly. And that's rare most of the time in the fall like this to catch females in the river like this. But that's that's a nice fish. Look at the girth on it here. You want to hold it up to the camera and let her go? Got her? Nice fish. fish. Go on. Make some babies. What are you doing? Hey, it was a tough day today fishing on Lake Winnebago, but I can't think of a better way to wind down and relax and sharpen my skills than reading the Badger Sportsman. It's a far from working experience. <laughs> oh, I got one! Finally, my turn. Hopefully it's a walleye. Yes, indeed. I finally got one, I'll tell you that. Boy, oh boy. Whoa, whoa. You know, yep, now we came around and we're, we're fighting the wind here and uh, it's wide open. The winds are supposed to be, I heard up on the bay today, it's supposed to be anywhere from five to eight footers. But, you know, nice little walleye, typical Winnebago system. Just, uh, you know, and that's the key. We fished that other spot for about an hour and a half and, and couldn't, we made about three more passes and never had a bite, time to move. And that's the key, these fish are always moving all the time. Oh, nice fish. Woo, nice job, Ryan. You know, when you're fishing, especially real windy conditions like we have right here, that high vis line really comes into play because a lot of times you're not going to feel the bite. I'm watching that line drop every time. I'm kind of snapping it up 
and I'm following it back down, keeping my line taut until it hits the bottom. If all of a sudden I see that line jump automatically, I'm gonna set the hook on it. So that high-vis line in these kind of conditions, low light conditions or super windy conditions is definitely a bonus when you're vertical jigging. Again, following that line down every time. Lifting it up, you know, you gotta figure that most of these walleyes are, are pretty tight to bottom. So I'm lifting it up about six inches and letting it fall. I'm putting a little bit of a snap into it and then I'm slowing it down as it falls down. And 90% of the fish are gonna hit it on the drop because the bait's going to them, falling to them, versus when you're popping it up. Even though a lot of times when you're coming back up, you will feel the fish, but they are actually hitting it on the drop. You're just not catching it in time, in time as it's falling. So that's the, the key part about that high-vis line is to watch it as it's falling because a lot of fish will suck it in, spit it out before you come back up. So you want to get on that bite right away. Oh, here we go. Whitey. Oh, whitey. Here we go, you guys. Oh, back on the white bass. Reminds me of yesterday. You guys were catching walleyes. What am I catching? White bass. Come on, there's a white bass. I don't care as long as they're tugging on my rod. That's all that matters to me. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, nice fish. You are always the junk food, junk fish, fish. No, sucker. Nice job. <laughs> Yesterday it was the Elipout. Last time we fished together, what was it? The buffalo. buffalo. Right. You're a multi-species fisherman. That's all there's to it. Hey, think about the muskie we could catch if we put a quick strike rig into that baby, huh? Or flathead. I want to see the flathead that eats that one. There you go, guy. Bloosh. Glad I switched back to that plastics, I'll tell you that. Look at that sucker. Inhaled it. You guys can get your fingers cold putting minnows on. I'll stick to the, the kale one anytime. Oh yeah, from walleyes to white bass. Striper diaper. <laughs> Ooh, oh, oh yeah! That's the color we're looking for right there. That is absolutely awesome. I love that right there. You know, when you're fishing the river like this, there's a lot of snags. You got a lot of trees, you got a lot of rocks. So what I like to do is I like to take the hook and bend it back and forth a few times, you know, and it does weaken that up a little bit. So what happens when you get snagged, that it'll bend open, the gap will come open, and you'll be able to pull them out a lot easier, especially because I'm using a lot of times, you know, six to eight pound test line. And again, by bending that hook back and forth like that, just about three or four times like that, when you get snagged, it'll bend right open, open right up, and then you'll be able to get your jigs back. So otherwise you're spending a lot more money on jigs and you're retying all the time. Tip of the week, Larry Smith Outdoors. There you go, buddy. <laughs> You're on your own now. You got a walleye? A walleye and a white bass. Bring him in, Ray. Nice job. Woo. Yes. Back on him. I'll tell you, you know what? It took us a long time, and we finally moved up river far enough, and we got back on him all. You guys want to show him? Nice job. Mike, you gotta hold your sucker up. Now that just shows you the different personalities here, right? <laughs> the double, another double, come on. Whitey. A whitey in, ooh, nice whitey ring.
You know, you guys, another great day. You know, I love this Wolf River. And uh, this, you know, in Wisconsin, we have uh, so many great waters to enjoy and a lot of really good fisheries. Hey, I hope everybody enjoyed our show this week on Larry Smith Outdoors. Join us on Facebook and Twitter. And just remember, we're going to have a new show every week, 52 weeks a year. And remember another thing, it's a great day to be alive. You know, a key when you're fishing a river like this and there's a tons of trees and lots of snags, what I like to do is I like to kind of take the temper out of a hook. So what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll bend it. Maybe I won't bend it quite that much. 